Welcome back guys. So in this video, we are going to complete the last part of the, the JWT authentication where we have the token. And if you remember, just to ref, uh, refresh your memory, uh, if, I, if I show you, we have that token, which is active for next one uh, hour. So we can use that token to, to, to communicate with, with our uh, API, which is currently uh, uh not returning us any value due to the authorization uh, issue so in this video we are going to make a call uh, to our api using the jwt token so let's come back and let me just quickly create another uh, call at a request so now that's going to be the get request and what i'll do i'll just call it here uh, get that this value information uh, any name you can give it because that that's not the the code in here we so now the url that we are going to to test is the same url which is giving us the error and just for a quick uh alignment with with the browser url and uh the call that i'm going to make through the postman let me hit send and you can see we are getting the similar message uh, unauthorized, uh, so which is good. Uh, now, the uh, the very first thing that uh, we are uh, uh, we need to add, if you remember in here, while I was integrating, uh, sorry, while I was adding the authorization, I put that the request.header.authorization, uh, which means the JWT token is going to be part of the, the header. So now I'm gonna show you where you can put your token. Uh, we are going to create a authorization in the header. So you can see authorization is in here and I'm going to add bearer and after space, I will put my token that I have actually, I've, I've got as part of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, as part of the post, uh, a post request. So let me just quickly copy that. Make sure you are uh, careful while you are copying uh, from one window to another, because if there's any additional character, it's gonna uh, fail the uh, fail the the call, right? So sometimes you just struggle. Everything is working, your configuration is right, but just because you haven't uh, copy paste correctly, so it might uh, uh, impact on on the on the get call, right? But generally in the programming uh, uh, environment, we don't need to worry about because we dynamically extract that token and then we pass it to another call to get the 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 value. So everything is more like automated. So there is no manual uh, work involved like we have the uh, we have in the in the postman environment right here we're just doing the all these things to making sure our api is working our token is valid and we are getting token correctly so all these tests we do within the postman environment and once everything is working it's much easier for us to bring the all these things back into our dev environment and work there right and i'm going to show you uh, shortly once we finish the the postman So I've copied my token as well. Uh, so I'm good. Uh, you can see uh, authorization. I've added the, the header and uh, the value. So we are good with, with the information that is required to legitimate the API call. And now let me hit send. Voila, we can see that the factorial is coming correctly. And if you remember, the last time we have changed so we can match the the output uh with with the with the function uh that we have called manually uh, through through the through the lambda environment just for for a sake of uh, uh, uh another test we're going to change or increase the digit we deploy the changes now api uh, so the lambda function has been changed let me just test to show you the the now the the value is pretty uh, big we have 362880 coming back with our token is still active so we don't need to uh, call another post request for next 60 minutes we can use that token so that's where you know if you have the uh, automated jobs which are running that needs to be authenticated against the the uh, against the uh, API so they can still use that token as long as they are remaining within the within the time limits of 60 minutes right 
it once it's across the 60 minute obviously the token gonna get expired and you need to uh, each, uh, put another post request to get a new token and then you can follow the same pattern in in your code right so let me just go and hit send now you can see everything is working sweet so that that's how uh, we we uh, we uh, 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 i would say we put security around our apis uh, and that that's a very important concept in these days, especially within the cloud environment uh, where you are working. Obviously, it's not only applicable on, on the data side. Uh, don't think that oh, if once you have the Lambda function, uh, you just need to, uh, sorry, once you have the Lambda function for, uh, that is interacting with the data, you only need to secure those functions through the API gateway. Tell you the truth, wherever you are building your code, because generally the hacker, the go and they look those APIs uh, uh, endpoints which are open so they can call those APIs they can provide the parameter you know they can just put some call so they can extract the data right so make sure you have uh, put uh, great attention while you are developing your APIs and making sure that you are uh, securing them using the Cognito. Uh, I have split it into five parts so you can logically go through step by step and you can follow the journey to, to secure your API and you know some part you can easily grab and some part you might need to, to uh, watch more than one time uh but uh, feel free to to reach out if you uh, have any question or you're facing any issue more than happy to answer and guess what our next video is going to uh, do the same thing programmatically using the python uh within the lambda function and then in the in the vs code using the local dev environment so hopefully that makes sense thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video stay tuned